Today we have the poem Eve to her daughters written by Judith Wright. When we go into the poem Eve to her daughters first of all we have to see the illusion that is there right in the name the word Eve according to Genesis 1 and 2 according to Islam Judaism Christianity all these religions believe that the first couple the first man and woman on earth was adam and eve god created adam and from his rib created eve so that they would have each other they lived in a flawless beautiful land called eden where everything was in abundance adam and eve were faithful loyal and loving to each other they did not know a day of shame or guilt nothing like that existed it was heavenly but there trouble came in in the form of satan satan came in and through a snake he influenced eve to take a bite of a fruit which lay on the forbidden tree there was a single forbidden tree in the garden of eden which god had asked them not to take god had asked them not to partake of the fruit of this particular tree but satan telling eve that this would give her knowledge that would make her godly equal to god equal to the creator he tempts her to take a bite and she then gives it to adam who also partakes of that fruit as a consequence to this action they are sent out into the real world they are dismissed from eden and they have to build their own life so this poem deals with adam and eve in their new world or the earth as we see it now so let's see it was not i who began it turned out into drotty caves hungry so often having to work for our bread hearing the children whining i was the, i was nevertheless not unhappy where adam went i was fairly contented to go i adapted myself to the punishment it was my life so here we see the voice of eve eve is speaking out she says that it was not i who began it so the question comes began what what is she going to talk about we are the poet is building up that anticipation you we are going to see what does she mean by saying it wasn't i who began it she says we were turned into drotty caves drotty the word drotty means uncomfortable wet uh, you know caves which were uh, not conducive to living happily and they were hungry very often they were hungry because they were out in the real world all the fruits and food was not available on platters they had to hunt and gather and make their own food so they were hungry they had to work for their own bread and constantly they heard the children whining so but even so eve says i was nevertheless not unhappy i was contented i was ready to face the consequence of what i had done eve here realizes that she has done an action and she must suffer its consequence so in a very content way knowing that that is god's will she continues wherever adam went i followed i took on the punishment now here uh, one of the main poetic devices is consonants there is the repetition of consonants hungry having hearing h h the consonants are being repeated so this she says it was my life but adam you know he kept on brooding over the insult over the trick they had played on us over the scolding he had discovered a flaw in himself and he had to make up for it but adam is not like eve adam was brooding he kept overthinking he felt insulted he felt that a trick had been played on him in order to get him out of eden 
so the word they this is quite important the word they had played on us so who is this they is it god and the angels or are they referring to god alone or the word they does it comprise of both god and satan did god and satan together play a trick on mankind so these are all the questions that are being presented here and adam is doubting god adam is you know he his ego cannot accept that he has done something wrong he had discovered a flaw in himself and in this process adam has discovered a flaw in himself what could that flaw be is it the fact that he was uh, liable to temptation or that he was gullible or was he you know greedy what is the fault that he saw in himself or perhaps was his fault or flaw his weakness if you look at milton's paradise lost we will see a resplendent beautiful eve the mother of all creation milton says that she takes a bite of this apple and when adam sees he laments and he cries and says my eve you will be dismissed from eden from heaven and i alone maybe another eve would be created for me but i would rather partake of your sin than lose you forever and adam knowingly eats the apple you know over there milton makes us think of the question as to who has done the more graver sin adam through his love and loyalty did he do something knowing that he was doing something wrong whereas eve had naively eaten it listening to the serpent being tempted so here again we see the questions that adam is asking what was his flaw whereas in milton's adam we saw a flaw that kind of made him endearing a flaw that made him loving somebody who was ready to accept or bear the cross along with his wife whereas here did he was he ego egoistic did he just want to be great as god and what is the flaw he is talking about outside eden the earth was imperfect the seasons changed the game was fleet footed he had to work for our living and he didn't like it so now eve is describing the earth in contrast to eden the earth is imperfect the animals are very fast they are running away when the hunter is trying to catch them the fruits some would be poisonous some would be good and they would be high up on a tree so for the hunter and the fruit gatherer the agriculturalist everybody has to work very hard to make a livelihood on this earth and this first father and mother they too had to work very hard so adam did not like to work hard because he had been used to such a good life in eden you know where it was all served to him he complained he didn't like it he even complained of my cooking it was hard to compete with heaven so now eve is in the role of cooking and she says adam complained about it and how could she compete with heaven it was too hard so he said to work the earth must be made a new eden with central heating domesticated animals mechanical harvesters combustion engines escalators refrigerators so now we see the poet is moving into a mechanization an urbanization an industrialization all this the earth the world has seen and we know that judith wright is a conservationist she was a nature poet she worked very hard as an activist in order to preserve nature in its true form so she says that man has to an extent destroyed nature he has wanted the earth to be something where he is very comfortable so he has mechanized it to the maximum he has used central heating domesticated the animals for his own good he has tamed the animals we see that elephants and horses and dogs and every domestic animal is made to do its fair share of work just so that man can enjoy the benefit 
the, we have the debate of how a calf is called a cow it is not called a belonging to the cow but rather the calf belongs to the farmer the puppy belongs to the house owner the kitten does not belong to the cat it belongs to the lady who says that it is her pet so man has started owning animals mechanizing changing nature building dams deforesting cutting off trees putting mud and sand over where water should flow and building houses on top of it causing soil erosion so all these changes that man has brought to the earth causing the earth to suffer all these points we have to take into account here and modern means of communication and multiplied opportunities for safe investment and higher education for abel and cain and the rest of the family you can see how his pride had been hurt here we see that man has invested in modern means of communication there is the telephone there is the internet the internet which is supposedly bringing people closer but a great deal of harm is being done there too there are multiplied opportunities for safe investment man is thinking about his future investments he is thinking about going to space he is wanting to conquer the entire universe he is not bothered so much about protecting the earth that he was being has been given rather than his quest to know about the rest of the universe and on what gadgets he feels whether it be something for a modern means of communication or you know rockets or propellers whatever it is he spends money on it irrespective of what it will do to nature and higher education for abel and cain and the rest of the family so we see everywhere that adam's pride has been hurt god has hurt his pride and what is adam going to do adam is going to change earth into heaven he is going to make it so comfortable now abel and cain again illusion is coming here these are the two children mentioned in the bible the quran and the torah these are the two children mentioned and uh, it is said that uh, adam and eve had a great many children but these are the two names known so this is uh, the here we can say or i feel that toxic masculinity is being portrayed here adam is the stereotypical patriarch he is the embodiment of the self centered egotistic male you know very very uh, you know the the person who thinks that he is the provider he is the ultimate leader so that patriarchy and that parochial narrow minded constrained constricted male ego is represented by adam in the process he had to unravel everything because he believed that mechanism was the whole secret he was always mechanical minded so adam felt that he just had to know the signs of things the mechanic behind things and he always wanted to find theories and solutions and everything for adam was a scientific experiment to better his life he felt that the whole secret lay in industrialization he got to the very inside of the whole machine exclaiming as he went oh that is how it works and now that i know how it works why i must have invented it and here the poet is again telling us that how adam is taking credit for all his inventions while all the resources for his inventions whether they be in the field of medicine in architecture in uh, scientific discoveries everything all that he owes the resources to nature everything was found from nature and adam has done his part in inventing it so he got to the very inside of the whole machine as for god and the other they cannot be demonstrated 
and what cannot be demonstrated doesn't exist you see he had always been jealous so we see that uh, the poet says that everything that adam invented or showed he wanted a specific evidence for it he wanted to clinically prove the existence of everything and what couldn't be proved god couldn't be proved there was no visible sign of god other than in his creation and in the abundance of nature around adam and what adam could not pinpoint and show as a you know as a cause and effect he denied its very existence and he said no god does not exist and here again one more very important word is there as for god and the other they cannot be demonstrated what is this other here too we have to know that uh, uh, judith wright lived in an australia post second world war and uh, colonization had occurred there australia new zealand they were all uh, colonized by britain as well as america the united states too and the colonizer is the white male and there are the settlers the aborigines the bush people the tribals all people who were originally the first nations people of australia and you see that when the white man landed he became the center and all the others became the other so there are two illusions we can also say that god and the other could it be god and evil it could also be that god and satan so since god and satan cannot be demonstrated man was doing away with morals with the good and evil he was not bothered so much about his conscience rather at his advancement and now we come to the center and the periphery so so many literary theories whether we take the marxist theory or the feminist theory or the de uh, the colon col colonial theory decolonization everywhere we see the center and the other if it is feminism we see the male as the center and the female becomes the other or the trans the lgbt community all those people they become the periphery around which you know they are they are circling around the center and here the colonizer the white male colonizer he is the center but adam is refusing to acknowledge all this yes he got to the center when nothing at all can be demonstrated and clearly he doesn't exist but he refuses to accept the conclusion you see he had always been an egotist so adam is excessively you know he is uh, concerned with himself he, we can call him a self seeker he is an egotist here adam you know he is uh, standing for or symbolizing the colonizer the colonizer who has come all the way to australia just like you know he believes that he is out of eden his homeland was eden and where he has come to this raw earth is uh, adam's earth and what should the colonizer do he must convert this land this new found land he must convert it into eden he must convert it into his land he must put his culture his traditions his schools his language and he must eliminate everything that belonged to the aborigines or the bush people he must convert them just like adam when he set his foot on earth thought i need to convert this savage land into eden we see that here too the white colonizer felt that he had to change the ways of the natives the native gods the native culture none of it is necessary none of it need survive the poet says he was always an egotist so man's self centeredness you know is so uh, always in contrast with nature it was it was warmer than this in the cave 
there was none of this fallout i would suggest for the sake of the children that it's time you took over so here eve now says that after adam has changed the world so much made all this central heating and air conditioning and everything she still feels that the original cave was warmer there was a love there was gratitude to nature and man lived one with nature without disturbing nature but only accepting her abundance so now eve comes to the request the final request to her children that is what we see eve to her daughters she says for the sake of the future generations for the sake of posterity i want you my daughters it's time you take over please take over the ruling of this earth but you are my daughters you inherit my own faults of character you are submissive following adam even beyond existence faults of character have their own logic and it always works out i observed this with abel and cain yet again throughout the poem we have the allusion to the mythological characters or we can call it the historical characters or the religious characters so in whatever way each society would view the story some would view it as mythological some as religious truth for them and it is also historical so again she says eve while asking her daughters to take over the rule of the world she tells in a very resigned tone we can say the poem the tone here is resigned even on one side we see hope but on the other side there is resignation and she says you are my daughters you have inherited my faults and what is the fault women have always been submissive to men you would follow adam even beyond existence even forgetting your own identity that has happened to women for a long long year you know years and years women have suffered by not getting their rightful position in society in that way we can also call this a feminist poem faults of character have their own logic and it always works out she says the inherent fault of character it will come no matter what and here eve says i have witnessed it in abel and cain the story goes that abel worshiped god abel believed in the god who had sent his parents out into the earth whereas cain denied the existence of god this created a fight between the brothers and it is said that cain stabbed or hacked his brother to death and uh, abel met his death at the hands of his brother and this became the first murder on earth this became the first uh, you know the sin of murder also visited death visited earth that is the death of abel who was so angelic so she says these kind of you know faults of character that mankind has this greed it will just unfold itself no matter what she says that she has observed it in her own children so the earth has observed her own children corrupting her perhaps the whole elaborate fable right from the beginning is meant to demonstrate this perhaps it's the whole secret perhaps nothing exists but our faults at least they can be demonstrated so she says from the beginning is this fable made in order to make mankind understand their faults you know because the fable demonstrates there is cause and evidence there is sin and punishment so she says was the whole truth all along nothing else exists perhaps the only thing that exists is our faults the fault or the damage that we are doing to this beautiful natural resources around us so so many questions are asked by the poet she is asking the reader to tell you know go deep into these questions of conserving nature of protecting human relations and it, it 
but it's useless to make such a suggestion to adam she says it's useless to tell adam that you know you are at fault you are not supposed to see yourself as the center everything on this earth whether it is other human beings whether it is creatures the flora the fauna everything have a place of their own a role a part to play and it is not all right to force your judgment your theories your religion your way of life on others but all this is useless because adam believes that he you know he is the ultimate he has turned himself into god who is faultless and doesn't exist so adam has made such an image he denies the existence of god but instead whom has he placed whom has the scientific mind placed in the position of god man has placed himself his own egoistic self he has placed in the center and he claims that he is faultless he seems to know what is good for everyone and and that particular person that has been created that theoretical conceptual person that white anglo saxon man that wasp man he does not exist that is what judith right is saying man can exist only being one with nature and his fellow beings so woman to man the other half birds these are some of her very important works so judith right uh, of course she was a poet or she was a white settler but she worked throughout her life she worked in order to make peaceful relations between the aboriginal settlers and the white uh you know colonize or settlers and uh, she worked very hard for the land rights the rights of land for the aborigines what land was owed to them and uh, you know so that they could inherit that that which was rightfully belonging to them so judith right foundation is there charitable society is there and uh, she felt that the wisdom of the natives that had to be preserved because that was the way to protect the natural life or uh, wildlife and the natural flora and fauna of australia she can be called as one of the very famous australian poets thank you